Hello, Anne Thompson. Hello, Richard. Very nice to see you. And your exhibition is Air and Space uh, at Mitchell Fine Art in Brisbane. Um, and it really takes us through so many different environments. We go from the rainforest to tropical island uh, to the, the wild outback, so many different environments. What does, what does this exhibition tell us about your relationship with natural environments and, and how you respond to them? Well, uh, it's very, it's, I'm always trying to work out how, how I paint and why and how it works out because it's still a mystery to me in a way. And uh, I might start off a painting and, uh, and then I think, oh, this is the rainforest coming through. Mm. And so I like to keep that open uh, mind be when I begin a painting, uh, which is very difficult because, if you, you know, it'd be lovely to sit down with an idea. In fact, I love now going out and, and painting on plein air, uh, often with other artists, and, and you have a subject in front and then off you go. Still, I, I abstract those, you know, uh, works in any event, but... But uh, but some you know, it's wonderful I, I, in a way that actually that mystery is still there for you. It sounds as though the mystery is the key yes, in many ways. Yes, 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 and it is a mystery. You know, it's it's wanting to make a painting that that's not obvious to me, and I want to surprise myself, and therefore surprise others. So, are there are there actually a few surprises even for you? Can you remember moments when you were painting some of these works where? You actually were surprised by what happened? Oh, definitely, definitely, because I don't know what's going to happen that, because the painting uh, begins and then it's, and it begins to tell me what to do, you know. I, it's not as if I'm quite in charge. I quite like that. Uh, just, just give us a lovely little sense, because there are uh, some works relating to uh, the rainforest, um, which I think is around mm -hmm. Jamboree. Uh, there's also some uh, works from Magnetic Island. Hmm. Give us a little bit of a sense of, of how that process happens. There you are, sitting in a, in a wild place um, yes. with, with painting material in front of you. And, and so what do you then start to do? What happens for you? Well, the experience at Jamboree was just wonderful. We went up to uh, um, Caroline Lawrence has a rainforest. So a few, a few of us went and it rained. And I really loved that. I always found a bit of shelter somewhere and, and it did nice things to the paper. So I did a lot of work there. It was really, really, you know, what, what artists call inspiring. But the big paintings I did when I came back, and there were a few of them, there's only one in this exhibition, but, uh, but they kind of came through because I'd done so much uh, work on paper. I think that's what I do. I fill my mind with looking and and drawing and doing things, and then it comes out in its own way. Well, let's go to um, perhaps to the Magnetic Island uh, situation, because yeah. I remember um, you and I have actually chatted about Magnetic Island and some of your experiences there in the past uh, in conversations. And, you know, that process of you discovering a, a part of the island and then deciding how you'd respond to it, share a little of, of that with us. Well, I went up there. I have uh, 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 a printmaking friend, Ron McBurney, who's an artist, and uh, and I used to go up there to make prints. I think that was the first venture to Townsville, and then uh, and then I visited Magnetic Island, and then more recently I've been going up to the Australian Chamber Orchestra Festival in Townsville, and then I go. Uh, I stay with Ron and Bronwyn uh, uh, in Townsville, and then I go on to Magnetic Island. And I always just have, get a little room there and paint and uh, go out painting. But uh, more recently, I've had other artists come and stay as well. But uh, but it's just somewhere I love to be. For one thing, it's uh, it's winter here and warmish there, and I can swim. <laughs> and, <laughs> yes, and it's uh, in these strange coronavirus times. It's not possible for you to do the the daily swim that you normally do in the, the beach near you. Yes. Yes, so, uh, so, uh, so sometimes if I have someone with a four-wheel drive, we'd, we go to all sorts of adventurous places in, uh, on Magnetic Island and, uh, and you know, just sit down and paint all day. So it's terrific. I love it. 
Well, speaking of adventurous places, um, take us to another adventurous place that you went to um, as part of uh, a residency through the Australian Wildlife Conservancy and Defiance Galleries a Gallery in Sydney. Uh, that's New Haven. Um, and one of yeah. the quite large works in this exhibition we're talking about is um, New Haven 4, uh, a very rugged, wild landscape. Uh, give us a sense of, of what New Haven was like as an they experience. They were good, those paintings. I couldn't believe it. I came back and, and uh, you know, I, t I did one and then two and three and four and five came out and they were big paintings. And, uh, and it was just, the, you know, that experience of being there and looking and, and see. when I first arrived, um, I, I expected to see rocks and rubber and all I saw was emptiness emptiness and and red red earth but then of course everything became became visible and then uh, one uh, wonderful day we went up in a helicopter and could look down and uh, like there's so many different ways of looking at landscape and i you know i often uh, hear my paintings called abstract but with a sense of uh, realism as well and uh, and that was that was just a, uh, and that's what happens. I just go go to places and things things come and things go. Or or I make a painting and it it might not look like a landscape, but what is a landscape? Is it close? Mm. You know, anything outside the landscape. Could well, as you say, as you say, there are there are there are so many different ways of looking at landscape that you show us. And in this exhibition, uh, mm. you seem to take us from some. Um, not exactly literal, but but very clearly evocative uh, pictures of a landscape like this New Haven one. We can we can actually see the landscape there, with some of the Snowy Mountains works in this exhibition. You can you can see that it's the the Snowy Mountains and streams, but sometimes sometimes it's not quite so literal, is it? No, no. I'm I'm really you know I really call myself an abstract painter, and and uh, and I think uh, or perhaps uh, Mike Mitchell and uh, Nisa, who came down to choose the exhibition, chose rather more landscapey paintings. But uh, uh, I think how, do, how do you manage to sit in both of those camps? Do you think? How do you manage to um, to be representative and, and abstract at the same time? Yes, yes. Well, yeah, I remember being interviewed for the Bulletin a long time ago, and they said, "Are you, are you abstract or figurative?" And I said, "Yes." <laughs> Excellent answer. <laughs> yeah, so that that sort of hung around that quote for a long time. Um, uh, so, I mean, when I when I was uh, recently painting on big ceramics, it, they be, they were more abstract, or or were they? They entered into reality. That's just the way I am. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the um, works in this exhibition are from various times in your art career uh, and that's wonderful to see um, tell us about the the very the very powerful the two samurai pieces uh, what can you tell us about those works yes well i i found a lot of this uh, roll rolls of uh, builders paper they used to use in you know earlier times you can't find it anymore and i think i've got them at the uh, all of it here. <laughs> That's why you can't find it anymore. <laughs> I, I can't find it anymore and I don't want anyone else to find it. Isn't that selfish? <laughs> no, this, is, this is a sort of paper that is, um, has, has fibres and tar or bitumen yes, through it. You, you rip it, it apart. There are sort of strings and, and tar and black inside and, and it comes in different tones and it offers me a lot. And I think that's the thing that I love is to start something and it, it sets off something else. You know, it's the same with my sculpture. I, I have so, uh, something, and then I put something with it, and it, and uh, and it becomes. You know. Mm. So with these uh, two works, uh, the samurai pieces in the exhibition, they're very they're very strong, upright, bold structures. Mm -hmm. How does a structure like that start to build up for you when you're working with the sort of materials you were talking about? Well, with a mark, you know, I ma I make one mark or I might stick a big piece of um, different or black on top of it, and that would set me off. And uh, it always happens, and I and I never trust it. <laughs> <Isn't that funny? laughs> 
What do you mean you never trust it? Because it looks so assured. It looks as though the mark Before could be anywhere else. On, I never think, oh gosh, I'm going to do something really good. I just think I can't. And, uh, and then I'll just go and have a cup of tea instead. Or, you know, it's impossible. And, and I think a lot of creative people have that. Hmm. It's just not, uh, it's not easy to start and then it's not easy to stop. Mm. And uh, that's something I believe in creativity, and you know, it's that's what I'm after. That's what I do. But having uh, worked as a, a very eminent artist now for so many years, it's very interesting to hear you say that you you sometimes think still that it might not happen, uh, and yet so reliably it has. Does it just? come by accident or do you think you get to a certain point and then as you say almost you can't stop yes well then uh, then when when it begins i might have the radio on because i've been mixing paints and getting started and then i just have to go over and turn off the radio and because i'm in that space and uh, and that's uh, uh, you know really uh, it's quite a blessed thing to be able to find because it it just takes you away from uh, the activity of thinking into the space of being able to be and uh, compose, you know. Mm. Really into a, a creative zone. And yes. does that also apply to the, the, the sculptural works you do? Because it's wonderful to see in this exhibition that there are some sculpture uh, pieces yes. as well as the paintings. Um, one is called Rotator and the other is Mask. Uh, rotator, wood, rope, metal, and fire hose. What great <laughs> materials! And and how do you how do you uh, get materials like that, or decide to use them? Well, when I, when I was making a lot of sculpture, I, I had uh, uh, I've got a big studio, you know, big uh, um, warehouse. But over the road, I hired two garage spaces and built we built shelves and things and put stuff in there and. Uh, uh, and so I, I always had so much, you know, to work from, and uh, um, and that's that sort of began before I got that commission to do that uh, big sculpture for World Expo, eleven meters high. But it was it's just it this role just happens. I don't know. I'm able to uh, to invent as I go. Hmm. So um, tell us a little bit about those pieces, rotator and mask. Um, again, do you do you have a sense when you you start on a piece like that? Do you have a sense of where it's going to end up, or is it much the same as the painting process? It, it evolves? I just put something. I look at something and think, oh, I like that, and uh, I might even find it on the road where well, you don't find such good things anymore. But uh, and then I put something with it, and and it's, it begins to look like something. And and I think with rotator, I was using ball bearings that were so things turned around. I worked with an assistant on uh, on making those things always. Right. Um, I was fascinated. There are two works, uh, both with summer in their titles, coming back to the paintings, Chasing Summer and Overwhelmed by Summer. Um, why the summer fascination or reference? Do you remember what, what motivated you for those summer paintings? Well, I'll tell you a secret, don't tell anyone, but I always name paintings after they're finished. <laughs> <laughs> okay, nobody, nobody knows that now. That's <laughs> a secret now. between us. <laughs> but, but it just, you know, obviously it had been uh, summer time because we have a lot of that here. And, uh, and sometimes, you know, I think even, you know, a reference to bushfires sometimes, but not actually painting bushfires. I don't know, it just goes in and it comes out. Because they're both relatively abstract works out of the range uh, yeah. in, in this exhibition. So uh, mm. perhaps they evoke summer in some way, or that's how you felt after you completed it. Yes. I mean, do you feel that looking at them, that you could think of summer? Well, Yes, they, they have a they have tremendous life and vitality in the colours. They're very very strong, and there's lots of, um, particularly one of them has a almost lyrical movement through it. You almost feel like it's a flow of music and as well as light. Yes, uh, was, yes. was my feeling looking at it. Um, again, and it's light, isn't it? And uh, and uh, the atmosphere of and warmth of summer. Mm. So I think you, it's quite a lot of poems too. You mentioned uh, a little bit earlier, just you made reference to painting uh, ceramics. 
Uh, and I know that a while ago uh, you went on a residency to China uh, through the, the Knock Art Foundation um, and painted a, a lot of work, uh, painted works on ceramics. Uh, what was it like going to China and being in that, um, uh, it, really in the heart of, of, of a global ceramic industry? That was a wonderful experience. And uh, um, thanks to Michael Nock and, and uh, Defiance Gallery, uh, I went with Joe Furlong and we were given this residency in San Beo, which was the most beautiful place. I, couldn't, I wasn't expecting it. And uh, we fl flew in from Hong Kong and, uh, and went on a long journey and, and, and arrived. And I mean, everything was just breathtakingly beautiful. It had all been built, but it was, it was early Chinese sort of architecture and wonderful paths and waterways and, and uh, um, old machines beating the earth for, for um, clay. And it was just, it's just a, an area where there's wonderful clay for, uh, of different kinds. And, uh, and uh, so I worked there for a while. Joe mostly did, did more painting because he's been to China a lot. This was my first sort of into China. And, uh, and so I, I, I was just able to paint on anything I could find. We were given this, I had a studio and I painted and painted. And then halfway through, um, uh, Mei Ying, who, who ran, ran the, was running the place, uh, said, I think we better send Anne into the factory. Well, in the factory in uh, Xinjiang, they made bigger things. And so I was able to point at big vessels and paint on those. And oh, I, I could have stayed there for a long time. I just loved it. Well, it's wonderful that you were able to get there before the frictions that the coronavirus now uh, have brought down mm. on, on all of us. Just as we conclude, um, how is daily life for you now as, a, uh, as an artist uh, and as somebody who previously, I, I know, for example, that you, you had a, a daily swim every day of the year, even through winter down at the beach, but uh, those sort of things I, I presume are not safe anymore. No, no. Well, I, I have a walk in the morning and I make sure it's, it's safe by avoiding people and people just go and uh, around and leave, a, leave a, a space and we say hello. And it's really quite nice what's happening with people hmm. who are out there. And, and I'm discovering, I just think I'll walk this way or I'll walk that way. So it's an intuitive walk and I've, I'm, I'm exploring much more than I do when I go to, straight to, to Clovelly Beach or Coogee or, um, or Bronte. And, uh, and so it's a different kind of adventure, but I do miss the swimming. Mm. Well, it'll be back again one of these days. But in the meantime, thank you very much for uh, sharing your exhibition with us. Anne Thompson, oh, thank, thank you. you. It was wonderful. Have you here in the studio. <laughs>